Switch me on. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Return Parker. I think he can hear you. Don't move. It won't hurt you. Welcome to After the Weekend. Weekend Harder. Rick, what do we do on Weekend Harder? We go harder. And what do we talk about, Beard? He's and... muted. Seriously? <laughs> Sorry, I'm ca- I've been staying muted so I don't cough into the stream. <laughs> this man. <laughs> yes, like... world's fastest boo. <laughs> you... you... You get a show all by yourself, and you you just think you can just do whatever you want now. I know. Well, you put me up here on the top. I don't know why I'm up here. So, well, I put you on top because I don't know why I did that. I think I think you earn your stripes it's because I'm the tallest one here. That's why. <laughs> it's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, before. Hello, everyone, and, and yes, we are here. We have a special edition tonight on Af- uh, after the weekend. We're, we're going to review a graphic novel, actually a few of them, with a very cool artist, um, Mad Ruth. Um, now, before we bring him on, though, Rick, the reason why Beard had to do a solo stream all by himself on Monday, which he did a great job with. Like my wife, even asked me, she goes, "Are you going to get replaced?" I said, "Maybe." I Maybe. think we need to go over the, y'all's definition of what great is. <laughs> well, let me say you—you you actually did so well. You—you you get this. It was fun. Are you, are you blushing? Why are you red? It was—it was—it was an awkward mess, if you ask me. But it was fun. Well, little little you did, did a great anybody, job. Little did anybody know, Rick and I were out eating pizza with our families. Yes, um, we were, we were, kind we were of, bromancing we were, it up and playing arcade you know, games. We were, we were, he came and visited me in Texas, and um, we were eating pizza. We were kind of tired that day, and then Beard sends Rick a text. Hey, <laughs> and this is like, what, five minutes before you're supposed to go live? Hey, there's no go live button. Rick's like, oh. So Rick had to pop in. He had to figure this all out. The little did you know. You, know, you, forgot, you forgot to mention what I said. I went, he's retarded. look of all the things we went over before the stream we didn't go over the one thing where i needed to log into that specific account not my account that has access as we're eating pizza rick is frantically signing in signing out doing all kinds of stuff to help beard but look 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 everyone's saying he did a great job everybody did yeah so y'all are all high (laughs) but he did a good job you did, you did good. You did great. So, take a compliment for once. I can't. It's impossible. <laughs> Everybody, hit the like button for Beard. To think so that way he knows. Yes. Um, um, 
and, and everyone and in go, the chat, go hit a like on the episode that he did on his own. Yeah, and also in the chat, I want everyone to say "good job, beard" or "great job, beard." That's well, I also everybody. before we bring our guest in and take the focus off of me, hopefully very soon. Uh, shout out to Jacob Ironside there, and also Blair to Blair, who were my guests and helped me get through that. They were great guests. Yeah, is he your grandfather? Because you look alike. I no comment. Okay. Or your uncle? No comment. <laughs> uh, is it you in the future? No comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you got to keep the mystery alive. Hey, look, Mad Ruth even says, "Great job." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Rick, yeah, yes, Rick came to visit me. Um, did you have fun, Rick? Did you have a good time? I, I did. I had a blast. Um, it, <laughs> it went by far too quick, but it it was great. And uh, I always forget how tall you are. Yep, I'm tall. <laughs> that's not the. That's not what the picture showed. I mean, no. uh, yeah. I mean, everybody thinks I'm short. I don't know why. Like, no. I Rick, feel like Rick do is, I do I must have like tall. little hands? I, I I don't know, but yes. Yeah. He comes in has a. Well, at least my door is tall. My front door is tall. Yeah. So there's no ducking. The best part uh, was riding around in JT's tiny car because. Yeah, that was funny. I should. I wish I would have gotten a picture because you did look kind of scrunched. I pretty much, you know, I put the seat all the way back and I'm in the back seat um, when I get into his car. So I had a roommate back in the day that was so much taller than me that when he'd ride in my vehicle, he'd stick his head out of the sunroof and make, like make faces at kids in the cars next to us. I don't have a sunroof, but that's yeah, pretty he doesn't funny. have a sunroof. <clears throat> um, Beard, I am your father, Blair. <laughs> There you go. I like that one. That's one. Uh, um, Tim, Tim talks. Good to see you, buddy. I, hey, man. That's yeah, nice to that. see you. I, um, I figured you were going to be sharing pictures of something that happened during that trip. No. I figured you were going to have something secretly lined up because do you want to tell them what happened to me? Oh. Yeah, you, you and our wives were really entertained by this. That's right. I forgot all about that. <laughs> No, I wasn't going to show this because we do have our. You know what? I'm going to bring our guest on so he can he can so share. So he can see it the, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt Ruth, how are you? How are you yeah. doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, RJ, sometimes we JT go. And Beard for having me on. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry, sometimes <laughs> we go off the rails here, and I, I didn't want to think like we forgot about you. Oh, yeah. that's all good. That could that could very well have happened. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, we're excited to have you on because we're going to review your 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 talented uh, masterpiece that you have. We're going to show oh, your you. book. But um, first, yes, Rick um, wanted for some reason he wanted me to show um, uh, this. So let me see if I can. See, th this is this is like when you sit family down and you force them to look. I didn't, at the I didn't necessarily from want this. Vacation. I was expecting this. I was like, all right, he's going to show the pictures. Well, maybe to I was. Sure trying... Everybody knows that this happened. Maybe I... <laughs> Maybe I was just trying to be nice. Okay. So I, um, now let me share this. So Rick and I, yes, he came to visit me in Texas um, last weekend yes. or last week. And uh, we went to, to the um, a park by my house because my, my kid loves parks and his kid loves parks. And Rick forgot that he also loves parks, but he doesn't fit in parks. So this is Rick. He went through this little weird tunnel. I don't know what it is, but... Um, he I could have climbed up over and gotten through it. I just, I'm like, <laughs> but he got didn't want to, didn't want to rip my pants further. There, so there was like this, like it's hard to explain. So it's like a tower, and like there's like these little slits that you can slide in and out through, so you can climb up, right? And he's on the second level here. I had, I had oh. one level to go. Okay, Tim yeah. says everything bigger in Texas. Yes. Well, okay. Children's playgrounds are not made for people who are six two and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he got he got stuck. Um, he thought that I never was cried. Funny. I was never like, help me. I accepted my fate. I was like, I just I'm <laughs> I've Winnie the Pooh myself up here. You know. The worst part was the kid behind you kicking you in the back, saying "Go." That was his own kid. Um, <laughs> Hasselhoff was on his way to save you. By the way, so. <laughs> And, you know, that's that's like the other thing. They all immediately just start laughing and they're like, let's take pictures. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what we do here. Also, he 
we did try to play a funny joke on people that I was taller than you. Yes. But, um, oh, well, I, I, did, I did tell everybody it, it took uh, three uh, jaws of life and, and eight firemen to get me out of the yeah. playground. <laughs> see, see, see how I was taller than R2? <laughs> See yeah. my my old roommate. If if I was JT in that picture and he was you, Rick, uh, he would be eye to eye with me. He was a tall dude. That's good. Yeah. Um, Jacob says, "R two, admit it. You got stuck and had to call the fire." I got. I my wife took it. I had gotten a free calendar of firemen and puppy dogs, but uh, yeah, he was on the did news. Did you get a plastic hat? <laughs> my kid took he, that too, so I got nothing. Oh. No. <laughs> He got long memories of his dad being stuck yeah. in a um, <laughs> playground. So, there you go. There, there, there. That was the gist of our trip. We he came over, hung out, ate pizza, and then got stuck in a playground. That was your mandate. Pizza. And a, it was a play date. Y'all had a play date. It, it, it was <laughs> good stuff. Um. All right, Mad. Um. It, now we have you here to go over your 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 comic like i said um so why don't you kind of share a little bit of history where you where you kind of started like wh why you decided to make this comic how long did it kind of take you to do um and i'm gonna bring that up i'm gonna bring it up here you're on the fourth issue right of your soul tack yep um, issue four now yeah yeah uh so let me bring that here real quick and while you're talking about it so um and you can find your campaign on um Fun my comic. Fun my comic. Yeah, that's right. There's so many different ones, but yes, yeah. uh, most people go to Indiegogo, but this is another one where you can go to, um, uh, and well, I'll put it in the in the chat real quick. Actually, oh, I've got it. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Oh, cool. Yeah, a friend of mine actually owns it. You know, he owns that site. So it's, it's oh really? It's creators who Very own cool. this site run by creators, and I know a couple of creators who are administrators as well. So there's okay. tutorials and everything. Like this is a crowd funder like, built by creators for creators. And, okay. All Very right. Cool. So. What what made you want to do this journey? What made you want to start this um, comic? Yeah. So so yeah. So first off, I started off in in Toronto. I actually used to spend all my uh, don't hold this against me. I used to spend all my summers and winters in Iowa. All my families of uh, Luther, Iowa. I thought you were going to uh, say Canada. Yeah. No, I am. I am. I'm born in Toronto. <laughs> okay. But uh, but all my relatives, my uncles and nieces, and all that. There's that's that's where back home is. Okay. So um. Uh, so I first I read my first comic I think in 1985 GI Joe issue 50 and then uh, Miami okay. Ice I was a kid like no one I remember Miami Ice yeah, Ice yeah, yeah I, I remember was, that one yeah I was like 12 years old like it was a comic I should not have had at that age but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's where it started and I mean I I got my comic books and Mad Magazine and Crack Magazine from my pharmacy I mean there wasn't uh, comic book stores were, right. were a brand new thing right when I when I became a teenager. But uh, I mean, I've been a lifelong Star Wars fan, so so I absolutely love Star Wars. Um, when the last movie was, well, I want to say what two thousand five for uh, the, the prequels. Uh, yeah, right? La La Last Jedi is what you're talking about. Revenge no, no, of the Sith. Oh, Revenge. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. George Lucas's uh, the movies, right? That, okay. I thought there was going to be a gap in science fiction. So around the time of Hurricane Katrina, I, I was in the military. I don't know if I mentioned that as well. I was in the military for twenty six years, but uh. In the middle of around the time Hurricane Katrina was happening, uh, that and that was the last movie that that sort of made me want to be a writer. And I said, you know, I really would like to take a chance at writing some science fiction. I think it would be good. And that's when I began the premise behind Soul Tack, just imagining being a fly on the wall, six thousand years in the future. Uh, you know, what would humanity be like? What would the solar system be like? You know, how many of us would there be? These kinds of questions that you sit around in the military and. In, uh, air, you know in a hangar or you know in a dirt uh, hole in the ground getting rained on right and you're trying to keep yourself busy mentally so yeah this was my escape place and, and that's how it all started back around 2005 all right um yeah. that that's pretty that's really cool um yeah. that you were able to you you thought of like a whole world right it's right. it's you built this whole world before you even started with your first book is that correct yeah. So yeah, like this is my decompression for me as well. So uh, I did two tours in Afghanistan, uh, 2006 to, to 2007 and then 2009, 2010. So uh, again, part of my decompression was this was my escapism. This was sort of just my place I could go mentally to, to recock. And, and yeah, yeah, I just dreamed all these characters up there. 
dreamed up the story, the concept. There's a lot of uh, military themes that uh, came over from my experience in the military. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of references there too that are like basically uh, people who've been in and served, they'll, they'll get them and they'll, they'll recognize them right away. But yeah, I just want to sort of make my own science fiction. And you will, I mean, uh, I, I make no secret of it. I, I've borrowed from everything that exists from Planet of the Apes, Star Wars, The Borg. Like you can, there's no denying what I've been influenced by everything that's come up in science fiction, right? right? And not just everything mm -hmm. that I love. But Every so. every every modern creator is influenced by every creator that's yeah. come before them. Absolutely, and yeah. and I mean I, I could see some of the influences in there, and I I didn't see that as a bad thing. I mean that's that's a great homage to the people who have come before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you you were kind enough to let us preview some of these issues, and uh, one thing at least that looking through it and uh, kind of what I I felt like is it made me, it reminded me a fair amount of total recall and some Robocop in there. Yeah. And I got to ask if that was an inspiration at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. I, I'm a fan of Arnold's movies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's all kinds of movies escape from New York's in there, you know, uh, yeah. Babylon, Babylon five, you know, you can feel a bit of an influence from that too. Yeah. Okay. Everything. Yeah. Just, and, yeah. uh, so, and it, it, you do most of the writing you said backstage and, um, you do all the writing. Um, yeah. and then you have a, you have a friend of yours that does all the artwork. Um, yeah. So so for me as a creator, like uh, I'll give you an idea of what it is that I I don't know if you want a full screen or not. Like this isn't going to be stellar artwork here by any stretch of imagination. So that's like my <laughs> thumbnails. That's okay. the kind of stuff that I give. And when I want to go really into detail for my artist, I'll I'll do a, a curds like that. Okay. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So this is what I give him for what he has to do for his references. Uh, and then between me and him, we'll spend the weekend going back and forth, uh, changing the panels, changing the designs, the layouts, flipping characters. Well, what if we approach it this way? Well, what if this panel smashes into this panel, right? And then between the two of us, we, we just we see each page like a piece of real estate because uh, it really is. You're trying to compress as much uh, you know coolness into a sheet of paper as you possibly can. And then once we're good with what we have, he runs off. He's actually a, uh, he, he lives in Chile. And, and his parents are getting older as well. So he'll take his page and he'll run off to his father's farm for the week. And then he takes care of the farm for his dad while he draws. So he turns on okay. a page every Friday. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you ever get mad at him, do you just draw like a giant middle finger and send it to him? Because that's what like, JP <laughs> and I would do if we wrote a comic book together. <laughs> no, I, it's actually the other way around. I mean, he's the talent. There's no denying, right? I, I mean, that's his art. That's his colors, you know. I, I, I might come up with the ideas and I might be the one that, that obviously I'm the one in charge of the project and I pay all my artists and, and everyone who collaborates with me. Uh, it's, it, it is my book in that regard, but it's a collaborative effort. So no, I, I, I want as much feedback and I want as much input. And so no, he'd be the one well, pointing the finger at me. not the other way. Is there any particular influence for the art design either between you or him because something about i don't read very many comics haven't for a yeah. while i like them i like the worlds built on them i just don't ever get around to reading them much but something about this felt familiar to me and i can't put my finger on it with so, around the art so for him for his designs uh, he's definitely more influenced by manga for sure he's uh those are more of his influences than north american comics okay. uh, he gets they get a lot of that down there so I would say that's probably where most of his art style comes from, to be honest. But okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This um, looks. Um, yeah. yeah, like this. This panel is pretty cool. Like, it's a. Um, I'm guessing it's a fight scene, and it, yeah. it's it how it flows through, you know, from top to bottom. Uh, the reader could easily, um, you know, figure out what's going on at the, you know, with with the panel and and not get lost right there's like there's comic books out there especially some of the from the mainstream ones where you start reading and you're like wait i forgot what happened <laughs> yeah. right and and um and i think you do a good job of kind of keeping um referencing back or you you have a good flow to it where people don't get um sidetracked or forget something right so i i think that's good but this is cool this is this is really Thank neat um so uh, very cool artwork. I now, when did you ever have anybody like would that would tell you like when you came to your friends or your parents or like hey I'm gonna make a book? <laughs> Were they very encouraging with you on this? Were they more of like slow down, buddy? <laughs> 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 
so. so so yeah so i mean like i spent 26 years in the military and i did tell people that i wanted to be a writer uh, when i got out and most of the pot time i was met with mockery absolutely oh you want to be a writer do you okay you know you're going to go after and you're going to do some writing when you get out like good luck <laughs> to you you know it's like let's try to say i'm going to go be a rock star right yeah okay you know you do realize what you do for a living right because you know you didn't bother to go to college or anything like that so yeah. <laughs> but no i am i'm I, I'm truly following a second passion in life. I mean, I, I started this around 2020 is when I actually, uh, I realized I had the time, I had the money. I realized what crowdfunding and social media, I don't know if we want to break into all that, but I realized the hardest part about being a creator and a writer is having someone to to pitch it to, to sell it to, an audience to, to buy your product. And I realized we, with everything we have now with YouTube and social media, that this was my opportunity. I just took a shot. Yeah, and you, yeah you're right. Um, Beard, you mentioned something on to me backstage about how the age of independent artists all the way around yeah, just overall comics animation movie production now is the time for independent creators not only do we have youtube we have youtube alternatives we've got various funding platforms we've got people looking for good stories in a world that where the big folks are not providing good stories they're also looking for genuine people right a lot of yes. people flock to this show here or other sh bigger shows on YouTube. And there's just a guy in his room or a gal in their room chatting about a movie. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because they're more, they're just genuine people. And um, for the most part, you, and I think people want to see that now because you're right. Like if a comic book came out from one of the mega, like from DC, right. Or a movie, there's usually a lot of shilling. <laughs> this is great. This is fantastic. There's not a lot of, a, re a rewards for people being negative um in some point when when from them from the creator to and and i think independence they they get both sides they get okay yeah this is great or this is you could probably improve and i think they like that and i think a lot of people uh uh sorry i lost my strange a lot of people like want to hear that from their audience and um i think that's did you get that a lot when you first started oh. matt Yes, the one the one great thing about this is the interaction, the direct interaction with creators, right? Like you can't reach out to to Leonardo DiCaprio and tell him that his last movie sucked, right? Like, <laughs> like well, you kind of can, but well, you he's, can. Not gonna, he's not going to answer you. <laughs> he's not going to pay that on a weekly basis. Female, attractive, and below a certain <laughs> hey, age. hey, hey, hey! He's going to respond to me to one of these days. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I always tell him that he was murdered by the heartless wrench wench um, Rose, but it's he right. never. He never applies to me either. So, <laughs> but in, in independent comics, what's really cool, especially when when um, creators are engaged with the, with the people that are backing their comics, is you share the experience of making the book, right? So you mm -hmm. you see the crowdfunder first start. Most creators uh, they should at least start with a cover and five interior pages, and just like you've seen on my campaign, preferably interior pages with writing as well, so people can tell you're not illiterate and they can tell you can form a story. Everything you said, right? Like you, you've got to be able to show so people have an idea of what this book is going to look like, that you're not doing the bait and switch where you're putting a really beautiful cover, uh, you know, a Lamborghini cover on a on a Pinto uh, interior <laughs> pages. You know what I mean? Like what, yeah. what the hell is this, right? This doesn't line up. So, but but from there, uh, you you keep everyone engaged as you create more pages and with updates and definitely it's it's a shared experience and yes that feedback being able to interact directly uh, with my backers yeah it's, it's all part do of they experience. do they ever when you do you i know sometimes on on sites like um uh fun my comic and indiegogo sometimes like comic creators will make a perk where like i could insert you into the comic or or something have you ever done anything like that is that I, I have it. So so definitely there's so you have artists out there, for example, uh, Michael Bancroft. I don't know if you've heard that name. Shout out to him. He does the art himself, the colors himself, the letter himself, the printing, the promotion. He is a one stop shop. He does it all himself. So when he's in that situation, he can draw people into his book because he does it. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of artists who do their own book, they do the drawing as well. They will offer a tier where, yeah, if you pay a bit of extra money, a couple hundred bucks, I will draw you in as a character. And it is really good to get in on because even though, say, you were only intended to be around for a page or two, the story could change and you end up becoming like a character that carries on for several <laughs> issues until they find a way to kill, kill you off. Yeah. I never oh, thought of that. Funny. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, um, I got yeah, a question because we, me and JT talk about this a lot, but like, you know, Right. With being independent is you, you have to go through campaigning 
for your comics? I mean, part of me goes, is there part of you, I mean, do you like doing the campaigning or is there part of you where it would be great if one day if a publisher was like, hey, we want to publish your work where you're not necessarily having to do a campaign for every issue? Um, so I think everything out of everything life, like nothing is easy unless unless like you you inherited, uh, you know, through family, through sure. this is pretty much the book, the only way that you get a, a golden ticket in life. Um, so like you look at a lot of rock bands, uh, they were, they were touring for like 13 years going from concert hall to concert, you know, you know, just grinding and grinding and grinding until they finally got the attention of a record company. Uh, it would be the same for comics, but a lot of indie comic creators aren't even trying to break into the mainstream anymore. They don't care sure. about Marvel or DC. Some, some do, some artists do that. They would love that golden ticket. Uh, to, uh, to a, to do you a think it's paper. because they don't want their stuff to change? Well, it's just it's a lot of work like I, you can't just put a book on a on a crowdfunder and it's going to raise money that's not yeah. how it works it's, it's the same as you can't just uh, record a couple songs and then expect them to, to... I, I mean i see an advantage and disadvantage to both of it i mean yeah. the the advantage i see with if you were right working with a publisher is that if you're good at what you're doing you can just crank out your stories and get them out right. um and not have to right get it funded you know crowdfunded i mean the other disadvantage is it takes away that personal touch to it where you're getting to interact with the people who are fans with you and going oh i like this or even hinting at like oh i think this is what's going to happen and where maybe that is and planned on your story or maybe it isn't but you go oh all the fans are wanting this so maybe maybe i tweak my story a little bit for that um what I find with a lot of the ex pros that, that actually end up going indie is is they actually they end up having to draw someone else's character. And you know, I'm not insulting Batman and Wolverine and, and, and Spider Man. I'll, you know, everyone wants to draw that in a comic book. But really, once they've achieved that and and they've done it, and you know, they don't really have the freedom to decide which way the character goes. The publishing company does, the writer does, the writer does yeah. what the editor tells them to do. There's so many restrictions on them, sure. right? They're basically drawing for a paycheck. So it really starts to sap their creativity over time. Whereas in the indie space, there's nobody overseeing what I what I do other than the backers. The backers are what decide. So like even if I went into my story, I could tell you like there's a panel I will be removing on future um, issues of the book, only because there's been so much feedback of people, and it's been really good criticism that, that I've acknowledged that 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 word bubble doesn't really offer anything. And based on that feedback, I'm going to pull it from my issue. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so that's what I yeah. mean. Like it's very cool that you can hear right from your audience right because right. they pretty much supported you to create the comic and mm -hmm. then you um so it's good that you listen to them um one question i do have there's there's been a lot of talk on um x about certain certain um ways to do crowdfunding so like some mm -hmm. people will tell you look i'm gonna make this book i don't have anything yet but it could be around March <laughs> of 2024, right? Um, then there's other crowdfunders <laughs> like my book's done. I already did all the work. I just got to help. I just got to get it out so I can print it and send it out to you. Um, that's basically what you. Uh, now, w is there a reason why one person would do the do the one and the other? Um, so no, like. It would be a money consideration, I guess, is if you have the money to do it or not. Some people straight up, they need the crowdfund money to even start page one because okay. uh, they don't draw or they don't have any cash, right? It's literally what they raise in the crowdfunder that just determines their level of success. But I would say if you're starting out, definitely you have to do your required reading. Like you have to know what comic books are. You have to know what they look <laughs> like. You have to know comic book storytelling. Wait, you're telling yeah. me Beard can't just take a crayon and just start drawing <laughs> and then well, he can, but don't, I don't tell me what I be. can't do. <laughs> Well, just think though, so, Beard. If you if you put that actually to to page and stop doing it at the you know the truck rest stops, you might get somewhere. <laughs> but I definitely say what a lot of creators miss out on is they don't realize that the platform is just as important as the book. It's equally as important, 50-50. So you definitely got to have an audience. You got to have a, a big Twitter following. You've got to have a YouTube. You've got to start getting on that YouTube and get familiar with with streaming on a regular basis every week. Um, and uh, you have to do what's called a mailing list. A lot of people skip this. You have to do a mailing list where people give you their emails saying, yes, they're interested in your po in your project. And you should have 100 or 200 emails that you can reach out to that have said, yes, I'm interested in your book before you even consider launching a project. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
right, go ahead. I got another one that we're, I'm not trying to knock anybody here, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but like, again, to JT and I, where I'm like, I see this stuff and I see like some of these comic books that are crowdfunded. I'm like, oh man, these look great. But I'm like, I can't afford to spend $30 every mm-hmm. single issue. And, um, you know, it's like, that's really tough. But like, I look at your stuff and I go like, you know, like eight bucks is not bad for an independent comic. And I, I, I kind of really like, it. I mean, it looks like you're very focused on just getting a story out. And I mean, like that's with comic books, like that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go chase things down. I want to go just, I just want to read a great story arc. Yes. Um, and it, I, I like that. It looks like that is your focus. Like everything is like storyline of part, you know, it's, it's a part one of, of three and yes. like it, that's great where it's like, ah, this is something where it's like, I can, I can have a complete little story here to read and then it's on to the next story. So, so very much, like I said, I was a star Wars fan for, for 40 years and, and dissecting George Lucas, not, not physically, but like the, the way <laughs> that, the way that he came up with star Wars, I very much uh, tailored how I broke down uh, the soul tack, uh, my intent with it. So it's supposed to be nine issues in total. The first three uh, issues, one, two, and three are the betrayal story arc. Now I'm working on the arise story arc, which is four five and six. And then the, uh, the last three, the, uh, seven, eight, nine. See, I can count. Yay. Uh, that's, uh, that's the, that's the destiny story arc. So the goal is to get all nine issues and then try to throw all of that together in a nice 300 page book, but people be, Hey, well, I'm just going to wait for that. No, they don't understand. Like if people don't help yeah. me all the way through this journey, I won't get there. So for like every one of these that I make, uh, just to give you an idea, I can, I'm going to the full screen those, but so every one of these that I create, here's like my interior page, uh, my credits for all my artists. Uh, they cost me six grand a book uh, to pay my artists. It's about $200 a page uh, to pay my creative team, just to give you an idea. Wow. A 32 page book, $200 a page, six grand to create that. So yeah, quite a process. It's like making a movie, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, I'm glad you mentioned that um, because that's, um, that, helps explain you know why you have to have a goal so high right right because not only do you yeah. have to pay for the people um you have to pay for all the you know the printing the product the shipping all that kind of stuff so um, yeah because i'm I, I mean me being kind of the outside normie approach to this this kind of realm is i would have had <laughs> I, I have no idea what it would cost and i think most people even maybe comic aficionados don't really know what it costs to put a book out and especially in the indie uh, industry so uh, just kind of knowing that it, it, it kind of makes a little bit more sense when you're looking at stuff well th- that's for me too because i mean i do the writing so i don't have to pay a writer i do the layouts so i don't have to pay for that but i have to pay for the the pencils the flats uh, that's the base the base color basically uh, mm-hmm. that before it gets uh, heightened the colorist uh, the editors and the letterer and then i gotta pay the print cost and then the, the fulfillment cost right so mm-hmm. uh, uh, if you can do those jobs yourself, there are people out there that they illustrate their own comic and then they'll color their own comic. Like I was saying, Michael, his production cost is technically zero because uh-huh. he does it. He does it all himself. He just has to, um, he just has to print it and fulfill it. So if so, the more of those jobs you do, the cheaper it gets. What's the like the turnaround time for like you to provide? So you said you're on you're you're currently crowdfunding for issue four. So what's your time frame what's a good time frame to say look i'm gonna make this book you should have it within such a time like what what's a, a good time frame to set for your, your uh, uh, independent comic so i creator? keep telling people to do a page a week and and some people who uh illustrate and draw they say you're out of your mind They're like i can do five pages a day and there are people <laughs> that can draw that and and they can but good luck when you're hiring freelance you know, you can't decide someone's tempo of life. You can't decide, you know, I mean, what they've got going on, how many projects they have going on. You may not be the main project. You might be the side chick, you know. So uh, I think a, a page a week is, is fair. It's a very fair baseline to give yourself. So if you're doing a 36-page book, it's 36 uh, weeks in order to get all the line art done. Then you want to add extra weeks for uh, coloring and lettering because it's got to go to different people's desk. And it's much like an airplane waiting to go to a runway. You're not necessarily the priority, right? I could give it to my letterer, but I might be his fourth job. It might be a week or two until he gets back to me and starts working on my book, right? Same thing with the printer. It could be at the printer for three weeks before they get back to you and they start telling you they need replacement pages because the uh, transparency isn't right. So it's good to to kind of give a real a realistic yeah. time. 
um, for yeah. people to expect comics. Because I have and heard, there's... I have heard stories where people have crowdfunded a, a comic and they still have not received mm -hmm. the first book, <laughs> and it's I, been I, almost two years. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure waiting on forty. I'm waiting on forty books, and some of them are from 2020. That's how mm. they're. Wow. Yeah. And does I'm... how often does uh does that happen? It's based on see art. The art community is a funny community, right? Some people aren't necessarily hindered by time. They're creative. They're, it's all about their creative process. And if they need, you know, a year or so to come back and revisit their project because you know they didn't have it all laid out, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm a military man by trade, so you know I'm very precision. Everything must be in its place, right? They instill that that OCD in you. So yeah. so so definitely, I I very much stick to my timelines. I'm quite proud to say that um, my, I issued the first three books. Uh, I fulfilled those April, April, January, Jesus, I can't even uh, talk. Anyways, April, <laughs> May of uh, 2023. And here we are again, one year later and bang, I'm coming out with the next book, pretty much a year to the day. That's good. So yeah. there, there was, there was something that I, I heard. I'm pretty sure it was the quarter corridor digital guys talking about product movie production, but I think it applies to most production things. It's like the production triangle. You can have something cheap, fast, or good. And you can right. only choose two of those things. Yes. And so there are people out there that can afford to spend 12 months working on a thing and, and put it out and have it absolutely perfect. But you know, you've got that, that time that's just gone out the window and they're probably going to charge you an arm and a leg for it. So I think that's probably, I'd like to get your opinion. That's kind of a balance among creation of kind of any media. Yes, abs absolutely. You, you you mentioned on how these things are $30. Uh, definitely as a backer, you want to know you're getting a top tier quality product for the amount of money you're spending. You don't want to be yeah. given something that was just spit out, like I was saying, five pages a day, you know, very basic artwork, slap the color on and put it into print. I would be very upset if some if I bought something like for like that for $30. I would not. Yeah. Be yeah, so, I, yeah, I would. I, I agree on that. Um, yeah. And Rick's right. You know, if you're spending a good chunk of money, Thirty dollars is kind of expensive for a comic book or more. I've seen higher, um, and yeah, and, for and, just and one. Yeah, yeah, and you you can, and if you get a book that's not worth it, I mean, you're kind of stuck, right? You can't really mm -hmm. return it. You give Rick um, thirty bucks, you get four comics, man. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think I think Rick's gonna buy your whole. I actually here. get a story there. I mean, like that's so, speaking, that's what I want for my money. Before yeah, we sure. go down through your perks, because I think I think that's the coolest thing about about the um, independent uh, things is like, like when I bought Jason Sandberg's comic, um, he sent me like these little little uh, old fashioned um, character Inter cards, the memes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought that was fun. I was like, oh, that reminds me of when I was a kid when I used to buy the X Men um, yeah. platinum cards from Flair, right? So I thought that was fun. But before we go down, what you offer. Um, <clears throat> Now, as an independent comic, I'm sure you've been through quite a bit of um, drama on both sides, right? And yeah. um, now, there's there is there is quite a bit of things going on right now where, like, I don't know if it's jealousy or, or if there's people just upset about something, but there's a, quite a people who are ha having a lot of success in this world, and some that really aren't, and it's almost like they're they were friends at one time where they were fighting. Does this happen quite a bit in independent comic creator? I'm not, I don't want to call anybody out. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of it on Twitter lately. And it's like, I thought you were all were friends. <laughs> it is very much a cutthroat community. Uh, definitely. <laughs> There's a lot of people who, you know, they know they're safe behind their keyboard and their computer. I mean, me, you can even say I'm guilty of this as well. So they know that they can trip <laughs> off. They don't really have very good human interhuman relationship skills. You know, they have never developed properly socially. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do get a lot of people like that. Right? I mean, that's kind of people that sit back and they just draw, right? Get lost in drawing. So you do get people who are, I guess, socially awkward in this space. I mean, it just it is what it is, right? I'm not saying everybody in this space is like that, but you do see a lot of that. That people will spurg out and get upset over nothing. A lot of drama. <laughs> uh, it is tough too when they're both your friends, you know, and you just see the two of them just going at each other, and then, uh, you know, people will break off into cliques, and it's very tribal, you know, with the the castles and the moat and the drawbridge. Yeah. All, <laughs> Yeah, that's what Beard do. does when me and, and JT fight Eternals. <laughs> I don't like it when dad and dad fight. But yeah. At the same time, uh, the promotion space, like, so we're on YouTube. The YouTube piece is just as important. And let's be honest, people 
uh, to get them to go to your show, they want to be entertained. And the drama and the excitement and what's going on and who's at whose throat now is part of the entertainment. You know? Yeah, it is. But I just, I just a lot of, I think there's a lot, it's great to see so many people doing successful things with their independent comics. Um, I just think if, if you're someone that's like, you wish you were up in that tier of people, um, and I might inspire you a bit to kind of maybe do something a little change the way you're doing something, or like you said, maybe do a YouTube channel or maybe, um, go find a different audience. Right. So, um, sometimes that helps, um, pivoting when you think you're going on the right path sometimes helps when you're going somewhere else. So. I, I do have another question for Ruth. Sure. I mean, this one is probably a little bit on the ambitious side, but I'm just <laughs> curious. Um, you know, Soltak, let's just say over time, it does become a big hit. What would you love to see your comic book? Like what other type of merchandise property would you like to see oh, it become? I I'd love to see it become a movie or a TV show. I was I, I figured know. you were going to say action figures game. because I see a ton of them behind you. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it, yeah, no, I mean I do love my action figures. I do love my collectibles and merchandise is definitely a, it's a nice well, thing. But, but it's got to be big first in order for that, right? Like, sure, sure. But like <laughs> yeah. like I said, you know, yeah, if it was something like well, an action well, figure, a video game, a cartoon, an animated yeah. film, a real film. Well, Ninja Turtles, it was a comic, then it was the um cartoon, and then it was the movie, and then you got all the toys yeah right any well, licensing yeah if somebody wants to license soul tech hell yeah well if you were if, <laughs> if, doing a dance if you were in the you know? 80s they would have been like look yeah. we're gonna make a toy line and we want you to draw the comic that goes with the toy that, that's usually how they did it yeah that's right yeah yeah <laughs> i the think transformers after was, the fact yeah, yeah i think transformers was set up that way like someone's yeah. like hey we have this great you know comic could you could you make cartoon. the orangutan saying totally tubular please <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay that, that yeah that's pretty funny um all right so here's your here's your um kind of your perks or your awards um uh do you want to kind of go down the line and kind of explain what what someone could get if they were to purchase um sure so stuff? so i sold each of the single issues, so if someone just literally just wants to dip their toe in the water and doesn't even, uh, you know, you can just buy issue one right there for $8. And it luckily, this is still based on U.S. prices, even though I'm shipping from here in Canada, but I don't care. It's still priced the same. I think it's eight plus five, I think. So for 13 bucks, you could just grab issue one. Uh, so that's issue one. And if you keep scrolling down, that's issue two by itself. And then further down is issue three. So we did do these Arrow bundles. Arrow's my uh, publishing company. They're actually out of Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so part of those bundles had issue one and issue two in there. So there's some people who already have issue one, so they just skip it and grab the other ones, right? Yeah. So there are some people who got the trade, uh, the 92-page trade paperback, which was the PDF that I sent you. This is the first one I tried. It was a 92-page book. Uh, because again, people, when you pay 25 bucks, you want to get your money's worth, right? Okay, so yeah. that's that's a that's all of them together. Yeah, that's the first three. Okay, that's so. cool. You know, I, I actually like that when um when like I like to collect old comics, but I don't like to read them when yeah. I collect them. I like to put them safely away. Yeah. But then, like for example, I have a, JT got I, so mad when I started reading those old comics when I came yeah, to visit. I kicked them out. <laughs> I, I, I shoved them in a playground. Um, now, um, I the. What was it? The Batman Night. Especially when it came out of the bathroom with that really expensive Captain America. <laughs> the the Batman Nightfall was one of my first like collections of comics that I have the full mm -hmm. run of, right? But I don't like to touch them. I don't like to read them that way. Um, so I went and bought like the the book, and it had all of them in there. So if I wanted to go back and read, I could. Um, so that, that's great that you offer that solution for people. So, and yes, Rick, you weren't allowed to touch anything. So that's all four. Guess, so that's, guess which that's... comic book I licked. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, here's your arrow bundle, right? This is the one for 50, right? Yes. Yeah, so those are that's an arrow comics bundle. And then in there you'll get a whole bunch of arrow comics. You get hybrids one, sin killer one, revolt one, hero bot zero one, paragon and... one. Yeah, and um Riff Riders one is in there as well. I don't think my book's in that one. I think my book's in bundle two. Yeah, there's my issue one of Soul. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. If you want to bring Are there any out. of those comics you're like, ah, don't read that one. It's crap. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm loyal to my Arrow family. Uh, they're great. Uh, Randy, Randy Zimmerman and Luke Stone. You can find both of them on... Uh, uh, Randy does a lot of shows 
uh, early morning, Saturday and Sunday. But Luke also has a channel as well called Nerd Bacon. And yeah, like I said, he he also owns Fun My Comic, so I'll keep pitching Luke Luke Stone. Do you? Yeah. Even Fun though you mentioned like, places. even though you mentioned like go on YouTube and do all that yeah. modern stuff, do you still recommend going to like comic cons? Yes, definitely. Um, you have to be tied into your local community as a source of revenue. So I actually had a story of being canceled. Uh, I went to a local, <laughs> I went to a local comic convention out here in Canada, and uh, one of the local comic shop owners realized the community I was with online. So guilt by association. Not even anything I did. Not anything I said. Not even hey, this guy, look at this horrible. It tweet. happens. <laughs> no. I don't even have anything like that because honestly, I don't. I don't care about things. Like Canadians that. were supposed to be passive and nice. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I treat everyone the same. You know, if you're a jerk <laughs> to me, I'm a jerk back, and if you're nice to me, I'm nice. Oh, back. he's over on that evil Twitter there, eh? Yeah, yeah. around here. <laughs> yeah, take off, eh? Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So so a local store owner realized who I was tied into in comics, and uh, they put out a denunciation letter saying that I was no longer welcome at any of the local uh, conventions because of my associations online. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So wow. I can still sell, however, at municipal marketplaces. So you know how you'll have your local town market or uh, city municipal. Mm -hmm all those so i still book into those and i'll do about nine or eleven of those and yeah i'll make a couple hundred bucks a night people come okay. by they don't know anything about me only sees my books on a table and yeah they just fly do you ever to... do you ever go outside of your state like do you ever go to like the, the bigger ones in like orlando or dallas or anything yeah. like that we're, we're trying to with uh, arrow we only brought back arrow comics again very recently post covid so a lot of this stuff like i said i've only been around since uh 2020 is when i started lighting up my my uh, social media and 2022 was when i fulfilled my first campaign so we've only been at this for a year uh so arrow comics very much it it originated in the 80s the arrow comics brand but mm -hmm. it, it's it's gone into like uh hiding i don't know you know what i mean for for decades at a time and it just came back out but we're reaching into the diamond distribution catalog we're trying to get into local comic stores try to get our arrow books in that way as well yes they go to all the comic conventions arrow comics sends up a, a booth mostly in florida is was, was where a lot of the booths were but yeah they do it all the time they're, they're showing up at comic conventions yeah it's it's a it's a revenue stream okay well yeah. our buddy here rogue attraction he always goes to the MegaCon out there in orlando uh yeah. so rogue look look for arrow comics but yeah <laughs> yeah rogue, rogue's a he's a professional con man basically nice what were you uh, you can that can go either way <laughs> i know i know <laughs> <laughs> was it was fun. intentional <laughs> um all right but okay i, I was so gonna say since you're in canada do you offer your your comics in french no i don't no i don't speak french yeah, i'm only like, like 20 minutes from maine quebec nah, yeah, yeah yeah i don't I think that's if I only in quebec. In quebec again i'll be happy i'll be honest yeah that's the only quebec. so um rick why don't you show like the first two or first three panels of his first book um um and, and sure let me zoom make, out first yeah make sure you show your favorite part <laughs> you know, no, I, I zoomed out. <laughs> but yeah, you can feel free to flip through the whole thing as long as like we don't go through every single page. Oh, yeah, I mean, no, we, 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 we're just going to go through a few. I, mean, I just want to show people like a, a good zoomed up version of your first book because, uh, like I said, the artwork is yeah. is not only the story, but the artwork is also is also great. Um, so we we have this is like the first page that you you ever created, which is cool. Yeah, so if you go like five pages in, you'll see the starship. Just so you can scroll past all this stuff. <laughs> I, Rick, I, I, Rick, I do have Rick, to, to slow it. down. I, I <laughs> really enjoyed the ship designs. There as, you go. As a sci-fi fan, yeah, I really that's... enjoyed those. Yeah, can so you zoom a... in on that at all? Because that's that's really cool. That's a big interstellar. So that's a near light speed uh, spaceship that humanity's trying to escape our, our solar system because there's dwindling resources and we're, we're dying. Well, we're desperately realizing we've got to get out of our solar system. But okay. every time they build one of these ships and try to try something catastrophic happens to it, and which mm -hmm. puts us in even more of a crisis. So yeah, this is a near light speed uh, spaceship and it uh, coming out of an asteroid, and it's their latest. Uh, it's their latest trial. It's run. so cool that you created a world behind this. Yeah. Like some people like create comics and they don't think about the rest of the. They don't think of the world behind them, right? It. Um. I know there's a there's a few people that have done have done that too, but it's just. It's so cool that you you've thought about that because good books like you know the Lord of the Rings he just didn't write the books he wrote the entire world that he yes. can reference to the mythology um, that's one yeah. thing I loved about Star Wars is it all was contained in a in a 
EU that was blessed by by George Lucas and very much you were loyal to it. And then and then Disney got it and they threw it in the garbage can, right? And, and they, they, they threw it in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> but, I really so, yeah, like no. the coloring too of the book. Like everything oh. just pops real well. Yeah. I like it. So yeah, I'm an image it, comics fan, and definitely uh, one of the philosophies when digital coloring first came out was make it look like a candy store, right? Make those, mm-hmm. those colors pop. Yeah, like nowadays much. comics like Marvel and DC, it's kind of flat, right? It's yeah, kind of yeah. like a pastels, and they like to like use a lot of dark colors and shadows. And well, you know, it, it, it reminds uh, me I, of I, the. I see the... you did not go for the the Liefeld look of as many pouches as possible. Yeah, well, I am a life <laughs> I am an image fan, I'll be honest. So, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, we'll, we'll see some Todd McFarlane influence in here. You've sure. got some extra muscles there or things that don't <laughs> yeah. exist. And yeah. That's good. I mean, yeah. that, that's what people well, want I, out of comics. So. I, what, I a really, sword, what a sword needs is a gun, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the fact it's like nowadays, I think it, the term would apply, but when you say retro future, you think like 50s future. But these days, retro future to me is more like 80s future. You get that kind of like 80s sci-fi sort of mentality here, like what you got with uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon. I don't know if you're familiar with that game. And I really was just, I got that throughout this entire thing, the character designs, the, kind of the world that they live in. And I love that. It, it's, it's, and I, I don't mean this, I hope this doesn't come across as insult. It's ridiculous and over the top in the best of ways. Yes. <laughs> oh, it was intentional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> humor. Your... Your... How dare you say that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you I will think that's see great. references to science fiction and jokes, and you'll see, oh, I know where he got that from. I, that's yeah. done in their that's another good poll, though. I didn't even yeah. think about that, because that, yeah, yeah. Uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon. <laughs> How you yeah. say that? Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I just love that kind of whole aesthetic. So that yeah. just the design through everything throughout just really appealed to me. And like I said earlier, I really like the ship designs sure. being kind of a tech minded sci fi geek myself. They so, kind of have like smoother lines that you might get from like the 50s retro aesthetics, but also not like something else from. Well, I, I was going to say, like, I go back to that. And to me, like that very much has that Star Wars look of like kit bashing. Where like yeah, that was yeah. you know they kind of took like a like a design, but then they add a bunch of other things that just looked like they fit to it. Um, yeah, it looks it looks like rugged, right? That's been places yeah. like dirty. I um, want to show you a couple more pages if you want to jump to them. So right where you were, if you want to scroll a little bit further, there's actually a fight scene. I can actually show you how it choreog. Cor- um, I'm not using the right words. Like choreography, I guess. Uh, yeah, if you keep going, I think that's the one. Is that the one or is it the next one? No, it's one more after that. Yeah, there you go. So I actually contorted. I sat there and contorted G.I. Joe's, and I sat there and thought about, you know, he's he's going to be pounding on him. He's going to pull him into an arm bar. How does he break? How is he going to reverse out of this arm bar with the next panel to, to go from the movement of the arm bar? To, okay, he's going to throw him over his head, right? You see, and then he's going to break his back over his knee so i sat there with each of those panels and then played or I, I spent a considerable amount of time thinking how we would go from panel to panel in that fight in that fight that's transition. cool yeah and See, and got, that's what i'm talking about that you 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 instinctively thought about that some yes. people don't and then they get some weird yeah their matter, fights right? look sloppy yeah it's like mm-hmm. what how did how did they go from that to that yeah. You don't <laughs> want to step into the somehow Palpatine, Palpatine return territory. It's just like somehow he came and turned around and won the fight. But there's one more page I'd love to show you. And then sure. uh, if you sure. keep going like really close to the near the end of the book, you see this massive skull in the top half corner. And you just scroll like it's deep. It's deep. Oh, yeah. Pocket. That's way down there or yeah. two. Uh, any idea what page? Uh, um, in the I 80s can find it real quick. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I can. I know on my pages are. Oh, that's cool. So that's a, that looks neat right there. Yeah, those that's are the like, that's sons like, of strife. Yeah, that's one's like biological. See, this, this is where I was like RoboCop because it made me think yeah. of RoboCop uh, too with the. Uh, yeah. Eighty-two. You got, like, Krang. You got Krang from. Uh, it looks yeah. like uh, yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> looks like the Borg. That's pretty cool. Kind of, yeah. Inspired for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, going, I think the skulls on page eighty-two. Yeah, just a little bit further. This one, nice. this was a very cool one. So I, I wish I could pull up the card that I had for this, but what I had compared to what Gonzalo ended up doing with that was just insanity. Like, I don't know how much time he spent just wow. working the line art for that page. That's yeah. neat. That's very like Terminator almost. Yeah. That's cool. 
Yeah. Very that also makes me think of like Mass Effect when you fight the giant uh, yep. skeleton oh, at, yeah. the, at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What are the, the, also, Geth, the Geth? Yeah, I'm inspired by the Geth from Mass Effect. For sure. Yeah, it looks. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, it reminded me of, like I said, like Terminator. It's just kind of yeah. cool looking. Like, yeah. That's, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to stay away from like story points that I think are really cool that I want people to find out on their own. Right. But there's so much in here. I'm just like, oh, that's that's great. I want to tell people, but I the, don't um, want to spoil it. The uh, detail in the like the eye and the teeth are really fantastic. Yes. So. Like I say, he spends um, a week on each page, right? You can tell. You can see where he puts all this time. Well, in, right? if he's watching, nice job, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let him know for sure. He loves yeah. he loves feedback. And I this is great. I, yeah. Um. Wow. Because you could almost, like you said, if you ever wanted to do like stills, like for perks or whatever, you could. You can be like, mm -hmm. look, if you want, if like you want to have like a poster of just this skull, you know? Yeah, I mean? you could you could poster that and people would be in, into it a bit mm -hmm. that's the yeah. beautiful thing about owning your own ip you can do whatever you want with the artwork you know? <laughs> it just don't yeah. sell it yeah. to disney right. <laughs> right no no well yeah i don't know if i mentioned that here but it, it is the the last jedi that inspired this book i was so mad so you I mean, mentioned I that loved, backstage yes yeah. yeah i loved star wars i was happy with being a fan of the sith and the sith empire and the eu involving that and i was content i would have read that the rest of my life I sat there like with a stupid grin on my face with my popcorn and my peanuts and my drink, you know, in, in the last Jedi going, I'm going to see Grandmaster Luke Skywalker. And we all know how that movie turned out right from the opening, <laughs> right? Gra like there's gravity in space. Like what do you Nipple mean the bombers, I, yeah. the bombers got to be over top to drop the bombs in space? Like, have you not mm -hmm. watched the previous movies? We've already got bombers. Like, what is happening? Well, right? well uh, on this show, we're, we're more excited about. Uh, I am so excited about Star Wars. <laughs> that's a different movie, JT. We keep telling you. Oh, that's right. But, uh, yeah, the movie. I was we... so mad. I was so mad when I came out of the theater. I was, and it it said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do something better myself. I'm rather than just tear it apart on YouTube like everybody did. I'm going to go make my own universe. That's Prove great. I, yeah. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, you've definitely done better than me because I just occasionally pop up on people's streams where I complain about Star Wars. So, right. like I said, I put you put your anger into creation. I put mine yeah. into an ulcer. So right. I just got more cantankerous. Right. Yeah. Right. But I just, yeah, cool. I'll make my own science fiction. If, if Hollywood don't want to do it for me, I'll do it for myself. If only we I'm, have the clip of the dog handy. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hey, look, if 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 anything, if anybody's watched this and is not sold, I just have to tell you the ferrets. Yes, there are ferrets and like they're my right favorite. There. Yeah, flying feral ferrets. And they only talk in three word sentences. So they, they have to be very clever with the three words. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't catch that. But oh, yeah. now you say it. And, and it is like, is it is it telepathic? Are they actually speaking or are the words appearing in the mind, right? The whole tele telekinetic. I haven't really figured that piece out yet or revealed that piece yet. Yeah, so, it just okay. kind of lets it hang there. Like, OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, you um, see, I just looked at that and I thought, boy, this is just like a crazy over the top, like <laughs> awesome, badass kind of thing. Yeah. But now there's, I'm realizing that there's more depth to that there. Yeah. And I want to go back and reread. Yeah. <laughs> um, this has been great. This is that. I mean, we could probably spend hours on on just going through all your stuff. And um, we would love to have you on when um, to do more of these. Like if you wanted to oh, do breakdowns of other things about your comics and stuff. I think we, I think that would be fantastic. Um, especially if we start reading them fully, like the, if we start reading all of them, one, two, three, um, you know, we, we, we I wouldn't mind what's, doing what's reviews. the pledge we have to give to have us be like in like the panel in the background of like somebody watching, <laughs> watching us. I'd have to sit down with Gonzalo and figure that one out. Yeah, no one I, I wants us think in their comic. Between mix. the three of us, my pledge would have to be higher what's, because what's nobody the wants to have to draw Gonzalo this beard. To draw a beard like a French girl. <laughs> no, no. I told you, you're never going to get that drawing. I don't care how much you beg for it. Wow. But no, this this is great. I, I, would, I, would... I can just clip it and send it to him. <laughs> we would. I would love to if you if you if we um, reviewed and, and uh, on your on this channel 
each book. I think that would be, I would think that'd be fun. Um, now, um, we do have some, we do have some pop culture stuff to actually share. Um, we, we were kind of complaining backstage that we really didn't want to do something, but, um, What's what's to get what's to get the worst one out of the way first, Rick? Let's let's do Alkalite. Let's do what there's a new trailer, new Star Wars. Speaking of Star Wars, that everyone kind of um um I think I think the funniest part about this whole trailer was the poster. <laughs> <laughs> the memes that came out the of the memes that. that came out of the poster was some of them we can show, some of them we cannot. Um my favorite was, was the dog. Yeah, the dog, the dog with the the Poot scoot scoot was pretty dang funny. Um, and I'm not sure why they went with that um, poster design. Um, but hey, whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, like I've, I've we've said multiple times, JT, with your affinity for bad graphic design is every graphic design team needs like a college frat dude who doesn't know anything. And you show him a picture and if he goes, <laughs> you need to redo it. Yeah, we need that. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, now, you said you were a Star Wars fan. Have you watched any of the new stuff at all? Uh, yeah, so I was one of those who refused to get Disney Plus, but my wife got it for my son. So it's like, hey, it's there. As long as I'm not the one actually forking out the money for it, I'll watch it. So yeah, I've watched, I've watched Andor. <clears throat> uh i watched a bit of the book of boba fett wasn't it lost my interest i watched the new um uh, obi-wan i again wasn't thrilled with that uh, yeah but yeah I've been, I've been catching a little bit of it okay yeah we of the we, recent uh, stuff i think andor was probably yeah better it yeah, was last... definitely drawn out longer than it should have been but it was better than a lot of the stuff that has come before except for maybe season one of, of mandalorian the, the last yeah. thing i've ever watched with star wars was mandalorian season two i haven't watched anything after that um, a good it hasn't stop, actually I, <laughs> I, I tried watching uh and or i fell asleep like i yeah. i just burnt out of all this stuff and and they were just doing a lot of weird things and i was like yeah. that doesn't make sense like why, why do we have people on scooters that look like um cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> um, but hey there's oh, no, people out there it's cyborg mods and yeah, there's yeah, people out there who love that stuff. So, I mean, hey, hats off to them if they can find some entertainment out of it. Um, but I think Star Wars is just kind of um, very um, diluted um, at the moment. Um, it used to be special, right? It used to come out every decade. <laughs> you would have a set. Uh, you would have. You would. It, I mean, really, it was only a few years, and then you got your re-releases, but then you got your, you know, the prequels, and those were far and almost a decade between each other. Um, and but it was George really Lucas's George Lucas's thing was he went around with this little um, sticker thing and he would approve or not approve designs. And if he didn't put his little sticker on it, they couldn't use that design. So he would constantly go around. His art team would be sweating bullets. Like we created this thing for you. What do you think? And he would, okay, yep, you can use that. You he must have approved that. everything for. Episode yeah. One. And they've obviously <laughs> lost touch with. Yeah. They're just making whatever. I don't care. You know, yeah. a planet that absorbs its own What's sun. What's that, an R2 and Pepsi cooler? Approved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rick, let's let's go ahead and um, play uh, let this. Let me know how the, how the volume is on this, if I need to turn it up or turn it down. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go through it here. So this is, um, and I think this is well before us. I can't remember the timeline of this one, but I is think it's. Is this like uh, Knights of the Old Republic? Mm -hmm. it's uh it's more recent than knights of the old republic it happens if i understand correctly towards the end of the high republic that's right. and that's where it it transitions from basically the jedi running things to kind of what you see in the prequels oh, for the main... talking rock <laughs> um yeah. i don't think there's any sound buddy you guys don't hear any of that audio no, no. i don't think you're sharing the audio uh, so yeah, if you are, it's low. Rogue says a hundred years before the yes. prequels. Okay. Yeah, which would, if I understand, it would put it right towards the end of the, the High Republic. As you guys hear that? No. Do you just no. have it turned down too low? Uh, maybe. I, I don't think you're sharing audio. All right, hang on a sec. <clears throat> well, while you're doing that, um, everyone. By the way, um, I think we're I think we're taking Monday off this week, but uh, we'll be back. Um, next Monday, and I think we're doing. Oh yeah, we're reviewing Miami Vice episode one, season one. Oh, season one, episode one, which is almost a movie. 
right? And uh, so we are going to review that. So we're excited about that because Mad Ruth, we we actually review a lot of retro movies. We th- want to go back to the past and relive yep. some of that. <laughs> so um, Rick wanted you to know, do Miami Vice, and I'm like, well, the first episode is literally a movie. It's like an hour and a half. <laughs> so you know, what, y'all gave me that? the keys of the car, so I could just show up Monday and goof off for an hour. I don't, I don't know. You, you might could. get a wild hair to do you that. You could invite Mad and um and have at it, have fun. <laughs> or did, you did such a great job last Monday that you can do that. Yes, we'll see. Knock yourself out, buddy. Yeah, just don't, just don't, um, just don't invite, um, um, let's see, um, let's don't don't invite Ryan. He he, he might get a little too crazy. On him, so. <laughs> yeah, he's got All a right, show then. Let's, let's see if this you guys can hear this. Yeah, close your eyes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're right. One guy he's... can't close his eyes. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say everybody's pointed it out, but there is the one dude who's just got bug eyes. <laughs> I That's thought not... we were finally gonna get our younglings getting killed by uh, Anakin scene, but they didn't do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> save you. Mm. you. I mean, th- that's a little bit them. of key jangling right there. Your eyes may deceive you from Luke's mm-hmm. training session on the uh, Millennium Falcon. Yeah. This just looks like uh, like they filmed it at the park. <laughs> we see, like every time you know you watch Rogue Attraction, he's over at Star Wars Land. This is what you see right here. Yeah. Well, that whole deceived line they already did that in Star Wars: uh, The Old yeah. Republic. They got a trailer that's literally called "You've Been Deceived." Right. So, <laughs> Tell me. I mean, for the most part, I don't hate mind. the the costuming or the designs of things. It yeah. works. Life. Yeah, I just don't feel like it's anything new, though, that we're seeing. Yeah. We've seen this in. Is there a desert planet? Right. Oh, there, you know, there will be. Okay. They took the prequels with the younglings being killed in you know, Order 66. We'll throw a little bit of that. In giant there. We'll laser throw a giant laser Star Wars the Old question. Republic in there. Yeah. yeah. Balance. I see fire. I, mean, I do like we got to see some like alien younglings. That was kind of... Speaking of fight scenes, a lot of people were commenting on this scene right here that it's kind of looks kind of sloppy. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's better than what we got in Ahsoka, except for the yeah, vibro blade. Yeah, like, it's not even the right yeah. weapon. Yeah. yeah. Does she have dreads? Yes. Okay. Just take it. Basically, it's a former Jedi ninja. Someone is killing Jedi. I mean, I don't know. It's some of the Doesn't some of the sense. some of uh, what people have a problem with is what that they're not supposed to be I Sith these times. Darkness. But I mean, they're going to get through it because it's dark Jedi, not Sith. Or we dark did. side users and i'm okay with that that's oh that's we're, something we're, that's we're already taking off we're already taking off rogue he, he's going no oh, <clears throat> i was gonna say now is that going to be a wookie jedi yes it is okay so no desert yeah. planet during in the high in, okay i haven't read the, the high republic stuff but i do remember there being a wookie jedi among the kind of typical cast okay uh really the only thing i don't like about their character designs is it too many of them look like you just kind of pulled them out of a bar in new york and then put a jedi <laughs> a, lot, a lot of man buns going on oh you're yeah. talking about um it's more like modern style than like old star wars like old, well, old west well i mean stuff. in old star wars the hairstyles were what they were wearing at the same at the time too but it just feels a little bit too like somebody you'd see on tiktok but you handed them a lightsaber and i don't know well if there's that's, there is a scene that, in this trailer where it looks like it was filmed at the park like like Rick said, because everyone's waving around. And- yeah. <clears throat> it's very Matrix. See, it this is. is the part that I have a problem with coming up here. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I start. If I can see a vein popping in Mad Ruth's head watching this. This isn't about good or bad. <laughs> This now I'm used to Disney power. Star Wars by now. I know what I'm doing. And getting. who is allowed to use it? What That's the that? problem with the Star Wars. They try to say it's not about good or bad. 
That is the basis of now, what George Lucas built is a world about in a universe about good versus bad. Uh-huh. Isn't Brie Larson supposed to be in this? I have no idea. Her feet? I don't think so. That would have been I thought a that was the big thing that they, they were having Brie Larson in this show. So what Disney likes to do is they 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 troll the world. They put these rumors out there, and then they see how much backlash and screaming and yelling there is on Twitter. And if it gets the right energy, then they go with it. So yeah, that yeah. was that was one of the rumors in the ether, but I don't think they ever did anything with it. Okay, so okay. Wait, uh, Rogue is saying Daphne Keane from Logan. Was she, yeah. she was the little girl, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, right here. She is. She can already do good fight scenes. That right there is okay. If if you go back to a live stream that Rogue actually did at the park a few months ago, there's a scene. They're they're doing that in the park. There's a bunch of lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. I think it's when like Ahsoka was there or something, or when Flang land there. Some favorite. some some folks are up in arms about the yellow lightsabers because those are supposed to be for like the temple guards. Well, they've already ast- they've already thrown that out, building the universe of the High Republic. Yeah, you could so buy that, you could make your own thing. lightsaber, whatever color you want right. in Disneyland. Yeah, I mean, of the of the things to be upset about, that's uh, in general. I'm very I upset can't... that there's no blind hotel okay. in this movie. Uh, Rogue saying they are temple guards in the past. Okay, that, that is a possibility. That's not really a thing that. Where's is the bugging me about. Star Cruiser? I want the Star Cruiser in all movies. I want that in every movie yeah. and show. I want the Star Cruiser. Where I just. That, I'm is, gonna see my are, final are words they on keeping this. Keeping the bad guy a mystery here. Is that what's going on? Well, it's not a bad guy. The bad guy is the good guy. Yeah, this is like a feel good for the bad guy. But, but the the ninja look. assassin is the the star. I'm confused. What's happened to the epic star fights, the epic star battles? We used to get one of those in every movie. Now they don't really do it anymore. Last one had like yeah. a slow, slow space chase and running out of like hyper fuel. What the heck? Like, yeah, you, you know, you can attack from multiple directions in space. Everything isn't now, linear. Am I able to just play through it as long as we're talking? I was just trying to to play it safe there by pausing it. I think you're. Well, I mean, it's but be- it's better to talk over and pause. We at were same good. Time, you okay. Know, you okay. Know, I just, so just, we're just making sure. All right. I, uh, I just want to say that I just don't care about this time period. I don't care about these characters. That's why I'm not upset about it. Mm-hmm. I think. You- I look. I want it to be good, and I, I've, I've said that any time that I've had a problem with modern Star Wars is I want it to be good. You Are can't you gonna be watch a fan it? and not want it to be good. But I don't think it will be, and I just don't care about the story or the characters. Are you are you going to watch it, Beard? Uh, yes, because I'm on the panel to review it on Roman's channel. Okay. Oh, Roman's making you do it. Your yes. other channel. Okay. Yeah. If Roman asks hey. you to jump off a bridge. Well, by the, the way, Roman Empire, they're going to throw me up on a cross if I don't. By the way, Beard, <laughs> we would never make you watch something you d- wouldn't want to watch. <laughs> I appreciate this. That's yeah. why I wear the ATW but shirt on what all we the other would streams. make you watch is this because we do care about I it. I love you. You love me. And um, I do agree with Rogue here. It does look better than Kenobi. I, Kenobi I mean, like if, a I, thing. if I hear a bunch of people that I know go like, oh, yeah, I watched it and was great. Then I would go watch it. If I hear everybody go, it's just trash like everything else they've done then i'm like well i'm not watching it yeah there's a lot of yeah. people on twitter right now they're just having a field day on the but you know if, if 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 it came out and it was great and enjoyable I, i'd be fine with it i'd be great mm-hmm. yeah well so, uh, what what are your thoughts on that craig well i mean they have done like i'm not gonna completely destroy disney so for starters they were doing like a vader comic and a darth maul comic from Marvel, uh, uh, that's Disney. I thought those were really good. Uh, Rogue One was fantastic. Like mm-hmm. I said, Andor was okay. So I'm not gonna attack everything Disney's doing. Like they do get some things right, but like yeah, the, the attention to detail isn't there. And for those of us that were diehard Star Wars fans, it's that attention to detail that we're all missing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember like uh, was it the um, someone mentioned in one of the shows where you could see a lot of the uh, set design, like they didn't cover up a lot of the. 
behind the scenes well, stuff. Well, even so. the Grand Inquisitor, we were talking about uh, what was it, a Kenobi? Like they couldn't even get the Grand Inquisitor's appearance right. They just lazily took some actors, shaved him bald, and painted his face, and then they made a toy with it, trying to say like he's a completely he's an alien species, like a Nemodian or something like that. I'm probably getting this um, I forget, but it's a species that we've seen in yes. film in. It you had the correct the head shape and everything. Yeah, you couldn't put the prosthetics on the dude. Like, who's in yeah. charge of this? Yeah. Uh, the Asian guy learned English to play the role. Yeah, I heard that. That that's admirable. Oh, like that's dedicating cool. yourself to something like yeah. that. Well, uh, we have another I think one or two of the guys in Rogue One had to do that as well. Like they basically learned their lines phonetically huh. and had to yeah. read the script pitch to them. Uh, had to have it read to them by their son because they didn't speak or read any English at the time. So okay, yeah. um, that's where they're due. Well, we have another trailer. This is from another franchise that's kind of gone all yeah. kinds of places. Um, um, but you know, the person who made it what it was, I also feel kind of has ruined this franchise. And then this, I just feel like they're doing the same thing all over again. They're not doing anything new. So this oh, is continuity, right? This this, this is aliens, um, um, Romulus, right? This is yeah. in between one and two, right? Is yes. that what this is? Yeah, I think yeah. it's in between one and two. I so it has nothing just... to do with Prometheus. It has nothing to do with the other one, Alien, it's, whatever it was it's, called. I, it's it's one point yeah. five. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so bummed we never got Neil Blomkopf's uh, yeah. Alien Me film. Too. That sounded just so much different. It would have been awesome. So one of the things that people have been talking about this is how much practical it uses. And that used to be a selling point for me until I found out that Barbie CGI'd their behind the scenes to make it look like they had more practical effects. So now I no longer trust any studio that says we used a ton of practical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rook says I, this could be great. So I, I mean, it could. It could they just go, well, they're just, they're making the female the hero again. Yeah. Which every version we've had of an alien film i mean that's what they've done um, yeah it looks like they're trying know. to it looks like they're trying to re put re put life back into this to alien without like redoing it right well, if, not doing if like... they if they take the a similar route to how that video game from a few years ago alien I isolation took and really just lean into kind of the like the first movie's horror aspects and the tension and things like that. You don't actually have to have that much of a story there. I mean, if you look at the original film, there's not a big bulk of story. It's more the atmosphere and drawing the viewer into the world that these people are having to live in. Right. So if they go with that, it can, it can be great. I agree with, with Tom. It, it, there's a lot of potential here. A lot more than we've seen yeah. from any alien film in the last while. And this is what I was trying to say. It's kind of like a soft reboot. It's not like what they did with Terminator where they're like, we're just going to throw somebody in 1985 and just like ruin everything. It's yeah. like, this is a, a different story, but we're trying to get, get you the same, you know, style. Uh, movie. I actually closed out all the trailers. I got to go find them again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I stupid fat hobbit. Yeah. Did, did I played that on Monday. I am the stupid fat yeah. hobbit. Did, yeah. Did, did okay. anyone see Prey, which is the the new? Yeah, movie? I liked that one. They're did doing you? a second one. Mm -hmm. okay. I liked Prey. I thought it was fun. I mean, it was like um, it was um, like it was like if Predator showed up in you know in America when there was Native Americans, and I thought it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I've heard. Things. And I, I can't remember if things, it's in this movie I... or not, but like I think it's like he le she ends up fighting him, a uh, predator, and he leaves or he goes wherever or he dies. I can't remember, but when... uh, I thought she defeated him. Um... Yeah, but there's an end scene there. And I can't remember if it's maybe I'm mixing it with other movie, but like like um like the English show up at the end of the movie. I, I think I think that's in Prey. I'm trying yeah, to remember. Think, yeah, I think they're I think they're in there. Because like, okay, they eventually just... show up. Like she's like, "Oh, I just took down this <laughs> alien." Yeah, I, I've seen here some synopsis of it, but I haven't seen <laughs> the movie. Which, uh, Craig, you're you're new here. I'm famously known as the guy who reviews movies who has never seen any movies, and okay. these folks like to make fun he's of me for it. Super famous, so. yeah. Yes, he's, he's yeah. almost what... yeah. He's really famous for it. So. Yeah, whenever the it came out that I hadn't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 
Boy, did, oh boy. There was a riot. There was a riot. <laughs> See that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is the penguin, right? Um, I haven't yes. seen this. Now this I haven't is, seen this either. This is, I don't know when this takes place, but it's some, it's in the most recent Batman um, universe uh, with a uh, twinkly bat, twinkly, um, <laughs> vampire which yeah. i thought he did great i thought some people don't like what patterson did as about i did i, I actually what? thought he was a good i enjoyed I just, that man mm -hmm. i like yeah. that they dressed up colin farrell as richard kind to be the pain <laughs> <laughs> like um i actually enjoyed his his style of batman i mean some people it, thought he was it, too emo but I, I liked it so I, my only complaint with the batman film was just it was 30 minutes too long. There were some shots where I'm like, cut this shot down, tighten this up. Um, he didn't like the, the, the stomping in the rain. That's what he was. No, the stomping was great, but there's like a scene where like you watch Batman drive away on a motorcycle. And it's like, cut. Okay, cut. That was cool. Can, can you cut this? Well, part, part of the art was squeezing a movie into two and a half hours. Like that's what they used to have to do. And then not at anymore. some point somebody just said, now you can make three, four five hour movies. And now you're not yeah, staying so awake for that. So yeah, you're right. It could use some editing. Some yeah, if you're going to give me a three and a half to four hour movie, there better be an intermission and a cigarette girl better walk yeah. by with a tray. <laughs> offer me something to smoke. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll look for that movie theater for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but so this is in I mean, that. I think Vegas has that movie theater. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is in that um, Batman world. You know, I still can't believe that's Colin Farrell. I know that's impressive. It's good makeup. When I was a kid. It's almost like a mob There's story, a like a mafia story. Yeah, like, real old school yeah. type. In Gotham, Rex Calabrese. Who's a big deal? Because that's what Penguin is in this in this area in this people. saga. It's like so he's a street. mobster. Well, like a, I mean, if they freak. pull anything kind of well, like what the, you got from Penguin in the Gotham TV show, he was easily the most interesting character for that oh, entire yeah. show. Oh, yeah. In my neighborhood. This is kind of like Batman and the Sopranos a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Penguin's chowing down on some gabagool. But I mean, like, even, even look at, like, the lettering. It's red. I mean, like, I get Sopranos vibes with this. Hey, look mm -hmm. it over there. <laughs> yeah. is, is, is he talking I, to I, I his agree. therapist here? That's what I want to know. Maybe. What he meant. We ain't all the gap of the goo. <laughs> Don't worry about that penguin guy. He's just a garbage man. Wait a minute. Wasn't that even the daughter from The Sopranos? Can you right? imagine to be remembered like that? Hmm. I wonder if he's talking about um, who was the mob boss that's always in Batman, like the uh... Falcone. Yeah, I Falcone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was uh, John Turturro played him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what do you think? Would you see this on HBO? It's a it's a series, so it's it's not a movie. You, oh, you it's okay, Cat. It's okay. We it, it's okay that you. No, you know what though? Sure. What you. <laughs> She gets well, a pass because she's on the other side of the planet from us. So. She, she is. She's upside down, remember? Yeah. Remember? She has to that's wear right. like magnets on her shoes because she walks upside down. She has to um, turn her computer upside down to watch us. <laughs> gardening. Um, Pat, if you... <laughs> you were hanging you, with hoes? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Kat, if you... if You you missed a really first part of our show. It was like 45 minutes of us talking about uh, Matt, Ru Matt Ruth's comic. And uh, it's fantastic. So once you finish this half of the show, be sure to watch it, the rest of it, because um, he has some good stuff. So <laughs> almost all off. Yeah. Okay. It's so risky living over there. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. You Australian. Let her live it down that she was hoeing it up. So. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to say Australian, because I'm pretty sure she's New Zealand. Oh. We'll take that as a personal insult. Oh, she New Zealand? Well, I mean, they're both under, under upside down, right? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, never mind. All right, what's the next thing we're we watching? Are we watching any more trailers or are we done? Uh, well, we, we do have House of the Dragon. We've got two of those. We can we can play those. I um I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I won't have anything to contribute to House yeah, of the no, Dragon. No, no, I, I have not seen I, I any either. Game of Thrones. So, 
Um, I like the Joker. I like the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. So I'll, I'll give that a shot. I mean, let's oh, the second movie. one. Yeah. Okay. I think it's supposed to be a musical, right? It, it's it's at least going to have musical portions, and that is a bold choice. That is that is going to make oh, or break the we, film. I think we could show Beetlejuice. Okay. Well, we'll mm-hmm. do Beetlejuice. Let's okay. do that. I mean, oh yeah, fans. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. I know a couple we, people who are really pumped for that. Well, I've liked um, the girl in it. Um, Winona Ryder? In, oh. No, the, the her daughter. It's, Wednesday. Um, Wednesday. She was in Wednesday, uh, the Adams Family yeah, redo. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. good. Um, I like her. Gosh, I cannot think of her name, but yeah. yeah. I can't either. If only I had someone in the chat hand to look it up. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's something that we can look this up, Beard. Uh, uh Jenna yeah. Ortega. That's yeah, she's it. that's it. She's good. Who from everything I've seen and heard is just a fantastic person. Like a rarity in Hollywood being a, a nice person. If you haven't seen her talking to Tommy Lee Jones when he doesn't remember that they had a scene together while being filmed, like photographed on the red carpet, and she like explained it to him and like was like real kind and caring. Like just seeing that, I'm like, okay, like she is oh no is a, is, a treasure um, among hollywood is is he losing his marbles to you uh, he's a... he's he's an old man it happens to us all it's it's no insult to him well okay i didn't know if it was like um um there's there's another actor out there that's really strong bruce willis that. bruce willis yeah okay. no it's not as bad as bruce willis he actually is that his situation is pretty tragic yeah yeah but all right, Jack, so we got... Jack Nicholson, my favorite. He won't come out and do any more movies. No. Oh, yeah. He's done. I mean, it, golly, it looks just like the first film, though. Like, how well they replicated it. Well, it's in the same right. town. No, no, I know, but I'm just saying, like, it just brings you back immediately. I gotta imagine, yeah. though, this is, this is the, um... Gosh, what's his name? The dad, right? Yeah. I'm gonna set the comments ablaze here. I've never seen this film in its entirety. Oh my goodness. Or the original Beetlejuice. Oh, wow. Shocker. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> a great movie. Now, it'll be interesting to hear if they explain the, um, the Maitland. So, like, what happened to them, to Gina Davis and Adam Baldwin's mm-hmm. character? Can, can you pause it real quick? Yes. So, before they show him. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so to answer your question, yes, her dad passes away. But um, is it is it Jenna Ortega's dad or is it the is it um, Lydia's dad? It's Lydia's dad. Okay. Um, uh, Je- Ortega Jeffrey, is is um, the daughter. Is that of Jeffrey one, Jones who played was that guy? Yeah, he. Um, Kat says she's so excited for this. I think a lot of people are. Yeah. Um, so are they going to do a thing like Star Trek did when Q came back and like he aged himself up just for you know because he could because he's a ghost he's not supposed to age anymore so they're going to have to have some throw a throwaway line for that makeup. i mean but nobody's I mean, actually going to care but it's also makeup though too i mean his his age That's is hidden said. by makeup. makeup yeah makeup you can only do so much with makeup no you can do wonders with makeup have you ever dated a girl at like before yeah. and you can do wonders <laughs> you wake up horrified the next morning <laughs> wait you are not what i thought you were <laughs> God, why is your eyelash down here on Beard, your cheek we have a clip of you of a, 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 a we have a clip of you with this same problem george 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 of the jungle strong uh, <laughs> poor craig has no idea what that is about and i'm not explaining it you're just gonna have to wonder <laughs> I'm just waiting for Beard to give me that same look from Roman's Beard, dream work. Um, you're gonna get when the look when of you, death. If you're whenever you come to visit me in Texas, um, you you you're gonna you're gonna have to sit down with my wife because she wants the full story. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Your wife was like, what? <laughs> full story. He was full like, story. get him on the phone. I want to hear. <laughs> guess no. I'm not going to come out there and watch that eclipse then now, am I? <laughs> no, you will. Um, all right, let's, let's continue. Let's <laughs> try. The juice is loose. 
Now, what would be great is if he made a comment to Winona Ryder and was like, God, you look old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she I was mean, she was good in Stranger Things. Yeah, oh, she was. She was phenomenal. I mean, that actually goes back to my Star Trek comparison when Q shows up and basically tells John Luke he looks old. <laughs> this is okay, so September. Okay, that's not bad. That'd be fun. Um you know, it, it's like kind of nice movie. to see Michael Keaton having a resurgence. Yeah, I mean, I guess that started back with Birdman, and, but he and he seems to be loving every moment of it too. I mean, like that's the yes. the, the best part of it. Well, I think he liked playing Beetlejuice because even at like the Oscars when they had Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger come out and giving him giving him shit, and he was like, "Bring it!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. He there is a I moment in his... he would go kick their ass. There, <laughs> there was a moment. So in great his... movies, yeah. Yeah, there was a moment in his career where like he didn't want to keep doing things like this, like Batman and Beetlejuice. So I'm glad he's kind of come back to it. Well, has everyone seen Johnny Dangerously? I want to plug Oh that. yeah, that's a great movie. We should actually review that on this show. Yeah. I've never seen that film. I know it, oh, I my, know the movie. Oh my gosh, never... that movie is awesome. Yeah. It's on Tubi, by the it's way. One of his best. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um the other one I liked of him was um well I kind of like that. I had a bigger scissors than beard. It was a really rough watch. Was uh, do you remember the one he did with called Life, where he like videotaped his? Yeah, hero. that's too. Whew, and then he one. dies. <laughs> it's like, wow, pretty morbid. Yeah. I know. I'm like, how do you do that one? But hey, people do that all every day now. That was like a when he did that. It was kind of well, who would ever film their entire life? And mm -hmm. look at all of us. I was gonna say that's what after the weekend is for me. One day I'm gonna die. It's for my kid to rewatch. <laughs> wow. At least you don't do what other people do and force their kids onto camera so they never have normal lives. They basically experience child star. I try to syndrome. keep him off the camera. He's always like, Dad, let me on. <laughs> yeah. anyway. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get lucky and artificial intelligence will run out of you know characters to create themselves on, so they'll just go through old YouTube channels and hey. We'll make oh, yeah, one like this. Okay. That's Black I'm Mirror more, stuff where they resurrected I'm uh, of an somebody's AI version of me. <laughs> That's Black well, Mirror stuff where they resurrected a, like somebody's dead spouse. That is a. <laughs> mm. nope. uh, so we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap it up here. Um, I just want to do one more rundown shout out to Mad Ruth and his uh, Soul Tack comic. Um, he's worked on this since 2020. He's got a whole plethora of world building um that he is still has not even unleashed yet um he's on issue four um you can find his comic here at uh, fundmycomic.com uh i think you put I'm the link in the, chat. in the chat yeah I, um thank you he he's well over his goal but i mean he yeah, probably how wouldn't... awesome does that have to feel to be like it's not just at 100 percent; it's at 142 percent. oh i'm grateful every single backer every time my campaign gets backed i'm i'm over the moon i'm just excited to share this this world with people and, and yeah getting those comic books out there and then all that feedback people saying hey so I, I had a great time reading this yeah so I, i'm sure you won't mind if you've got a few other backers um but uh from here but uh, i think people people yeah if you're interested in checking out his comic you know please do um do the first one there um i think you can get that it's one of those um it's just one here. You can you can do the first issue here. But yeah, I, I think um I think you could you can you'll have a good time with it. I think you'll have fun with it. Um I say don't cheat yourself. Get all four. Get a complete story there. <laughs> I was gonna say anyone who backs while we're live, I'll throw in something extra. I don't want to say Ooh. what it is, but if you back right now while we're live, I'll go back through and I'll see anyone who's back. A box of ten bits, because I'll do it right now. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm thinking okay, I'll, I'll tell you right now. If anyone backs now while we're live. Uh, because I've got enough of these left, I'll throw in I'll throw in this half issue, which is basically all the. So if you if issues. you get all four, that would be betrayal one, betrayal two, betrayal three, and then you get a rise number one, number one. Okay, but it's all continuous. Look, so I was gonna do it anyway, but since you said right now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll throw that in for sure. I got now, trading now, cards too. Hey, do you, do you do you ship out to New Zealand? That's the big question um it might i believe it's worldwide yeah i it says worldwide it. okay yeah, if, it, if it lets you back it i'll find a way i don't know it might be pretty expensive shipping but yeah i will get it to you it says worldwide down the bottom yeah. there yeah 
like even if I take a loss, I don't care. It's worth it just to get the book into someone's hands. It's worth it. I think I think this would be a good book for anyone that's looking for something for new out there or refreshing from the mainstream comics. Um, but uh, where can they find you also besides your comic? You do a show every Friday, which is fun. Yes. With, so uh, I, I'm a Dark Lord Mad Ruth, uh, or you can just type Mad Ruth into Twitter and you can find me that way. Uh, as well as Instagram, I'm Mad Ruth. And then uh, on YouTube, I'm Mad Ruth Studios. It's all that Jack Nicholson head with the fire behind me. So yeah. <laughs> you'll know it's I've me. Got all yeah. those in the chat. <laughs> yeah, we. I was on your show uh, a few weeks ago when we did the Civil War uh, yes. discussion. That was fun. And you have another comic creator on there, Jason, and he he's yes. a a good friend of mine too. Um, <clears throat> do you ever? Are you going to do any collab with him at all? Do you think you're going to do well, something? He's committed to his Jupiter, like uh, so. He's got a crazy <laughs> Jupiter comic. I don't know, like if you're familiar with like Kirby's Kirby style uh -huh. of of comics. Yeah, yeah that you definitely get a Kirby vibe out of his comic. Okay. It is, it is a masterpiece and I would never in a million years want to pull him off Jupiter. He's got so many fans that love what he's doing. Uh, yes. I do. Yeah. But, I like it. What I, if he I, wanted to do a crossover with you? Oh, oh, of course I'd be game, but I don't think he would. we need it. We need it's to have such a different on, genre. He, he's, a, yeah. he's a good guy, but um, yeah. uh, I'm, I think it's great that you, that you have a little Friday, a Friday <laughs> show as well, where you can kind of still pitch, um, what you're doing and and i think it's fun that you you have some fun topics uh i think last night you did something about the canine dogs who were high or something i yeah, thought that was great so, yeah so i'm mad ruth <laughs> studios on youtube uh again if you type in mad ruth you should find my channel but yeah every friday we're live for 90 minutes and we do three topics from the week and we invite one guest creator so yeah you can just sit there for 90 minutes we'll tell you what calamity happened that week and you can be exposed. you know you know um beard's always open for invites he's he's like on every <laughs> youtube video in the world now so if you ever need it yes, my, my, my policy <laughs> is to say yes if I can. So uh, I did actually tune in uh, yes, yesterday, I think, yeah, yesterday it was, uh, for a little bit. I couldn't be there to chat, but I did tune in. I was I was lurking for a little while. It was, okay. it was a lot of fun. You, you, you should try to get Beard holes. on. Well, he'll, he'll be great. You're just going to see Beard. He's like, you may remember me from such streams as Jacob Ironside's <laughs> Black and White Creature feature. and we just need to have a, fun, right? Yeah. We need to have a um, too serious. We need to have a clip for that, Rick. We need to have <laughs> that. I, I cannot find a good Troy McClure one. I wish I'd <laughs> on Pinata Farms because I just need to record my own for you. We do. That's what we do need. Because all we have really is you punching Ned and then you kind of doing yard work. So it'd be fun that uh, we had you in the That's what I do. <laughs> all righty. Um again, Greg, this has been great. Um, I've had fun reviewing your stuff and then watching these trailers. Um, Thank you so would... much for having me on. And for the oh time. yeah, thanks for being uh, on. Thanks yeah. for letting us preview the comic too. That was great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and we you're always invited back to this shenanigan show. We're not. We're not we don't. We're not sure. too serious. So, yeah. um, but Anytime, like I said, yeah. let, let me let me know what the backer is to, to to get us in the in the background of an issue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. did you... So oh, did anyone it. did anyone do it live? Did we did you get it live, Rick, or anybody did anybody do it live? I'm working on it, but I also got to be on a show, so it's slow. Okay. All right. <laughs> Rogue okay, says I'll, I'll go to sleep, and any any backers I have in the morning, I'll, I'll just do okay. It. So even if somebody okay. catches in the replay, I think. Well, I I wanted to give people in the chat the first opportunity, as opposed to being like, oh, I'm jumping on there so I can get that for myself. But oh no, I've got plenty of them. Oh, okay. No, anybody, anybody who. Oh, okay. I thought you just had one, so it's like, well, I don't oh, want to no. be that guy where I'm like immediately taking. He's something. so kind. He's so yes. nice. See, oh, you're no, kinder than me, and I'm just like, I'm going to jump on it and say, that's mine. Yeah. No, anyone who backs me, uh, I'll wake up tomorrow, I'll throw in that half issue as well. But okay. Thing. Very cool. All righty. <laughs> so like like I said, Monday, I believe we're taking it off. We're, we're not going live on Monday. However, um, on the 1st of April, right? Is that the next, next Monday? It's April Fool's, really? Uh, we're going to um, review Season 1, Episode 1 of Miami Vice. So that should be fun. And uh, we're not quite sure what we're doing for April, the rest of April yet. We haven't figured that out. But um, tune in to our retro movie reviews. Those should be fun. Um, Beard of Liberty, where are you going after this? Where, what is going on? I'm on Jacob Ironside's show on Tuesday for... <laughs> Shocker. Can't you and Mando. He just sent it out. 
it's a Hitchcock movie, 39 something or other. Okay. All right. Uh, Very cool. The 39 steps. That's right. Um, I don't think I have anything Wednesday, Thursday. On what happens Roman at 40 the Empire. steps? You don't want to know. You don't want to okay. get to that 40 to step. It says uh, your currency is twice mine. Oh, it must be like. It's in US dollars. No. Okay, so she must be 60 bucks for her. Okay. Yeah, I see. And then Thursday, I'm on with Roman of the Empire. For I also can't remember that because I'm bad and didn't look at my schedule beforehand because. You know, I'm a professional at this. Um, and. Um, yeah, anything else that pops up last minute, people can find out through X, Twix, Twitter, whatever the heck you want to call it, at Beard of Liberty. I'll let you know there. All right. Very cool. Um, and then over there on Late Night with Cap, you, I, like I said, last week, we, a few weeks ago, we did Leprechauns. Actually, I did a recording video that's going to come out next Wednesday. And we're, uh, I, me and two guests um, reviewed the mystery of Amelia, Amelia Earhart. There we go. And uh, we um, had a good time with that. Cut, talked about some theories. And then there's a there's a, a team out there that's trying to find her plane still. So we did uh, talk about that. Um, but uh, yeah, should be and, fun. And I know our wives have been texting each other and I think they're planning on our next get together. So may, maybe when that comes up, we can guess what structure will R2 get stuck in next. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. So. Doggy door. <laughs> Ooh, why would i go through a doggy door because it would why? be funny it's for the bit come on <sighs> yeah and i'm really be... winning the poo myself there <laughs> Alrighty, everyone thanks for stopping by nobody's gonna want to rent that airbnb that's all i gotta say if i do that <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone have a good night have a good rest of the weekend we'll have a good week and we will uh Wait, hold on, hold on. I got to pick the right outro. Everyone have a good night and I will see you. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, truck to refrigerators to dumpster, 360 spin onto the palace, backflip gainer into the trash. <laughs> Big, just relax, have fun, just gonna have fun with it.